So ever since I made this video about studying lead code for a year, a lot of you have been asking about how I retained all the questions that I studied and the spreadsheet that I used to study. So today I'm gonna to cover all of that in as condensed a package as possible. So I wanna preface by saying that I'm not an expert on all this. And there are definitely tons of places I could have improved. So the first thing I did, which was critical to the rest of the process was take the course learning how to learn in order to figure out the most effective ways to get information into your brain. And when I first got the advice to take this course, I kind of thought it was a huge waste of time because I thought it was weird to learn how to study before actually study. But the advice that I was given was that if you learn these concepts well to start, they will pay dividends in the long term while you're studying. And I took the course and it was actually a very solid course that taught me a lot of things I didn't realize before. But the main takeaway I got from it was the concept of spaced repetition. And what this basically boiled down to was the more times you repeat a concept, the better you get at committing it to long-term memory. And most importantly, the more likely you'll be able to apply the concept. So the actual concept of spaced repetition is to repeat a question at increasingly spaced out intervals until you fully understand the concept. Another big thing I took away was not to underestimate sleep. You know how some people say, I'll sleep on that before making a decision? It's not really them being lazy or anything. It's just because sleeping actually helps us break down difficult problems subconsciously. Have you ever had that feeling where you're like banging your head against a really hard question and you just go to sleep in frustration and then you wake up and suddenly it's like, everything clicked into place. So this is actually a pretty common thing. And I use this concept to my advantage when I was studying for these interviews. If I encountered an extremely difficult lead code question, which was a lot, especially at the beginning, I would just move on and sleep on it. And usually the next day, the concept would actually be much more easily digestible in my head. And this brings me to the next big thing I did to try to retain as much lead code as possible. And that was using the spreadsheet that I made to track all my questions. So a lot of people have asked me to share my original spreadsheet, but unfortunately it has a lot of personal information on it, like companies I applied to and stuff like that. But I will create a spreadsheet with a very similar format to the one I use so that you can use it yourself and modify it and potentially make it better and everything. So basically my spreadsheet was only a couple of columns. What service I used, what question I did, the level of the question, the date solved, the time taken to solve, the date most recently solved, a needs churn section, and some miscellaneous columns like needs attention and lessons learned and stuff. So none of this was really that complicated. And the only automation I did here was to compare the last completed date to the current date. And the purpose of this was that if my last completed date was more than seven days away, I would populate the needs churn column, meaning that I did this question more than a week ago and I should probably repeat it. And as soon as I updated the completed date in the spreadsheet, the needs churn column would go away. So all the concepts here were applying the space repetition concept that I was talking about earlier. And I would always time every single question that I did so that I could track my progress. The idea was that if you record all your questions, later on when you repeat a question, you'll see if you're doing it faster or slower and therefore you'll see your progress. And the column named needs attention was a very unscientific scientific method I use. So if you're familiar with working out and going to the gym, there's a concept called RPE or rate of perceived exertion, which literally just means when you complete a set while you're working out, you rate from a scale of one to 10, how difficult you thought the set was. One being the easiest thing you've ever done in your life and 10 being I literally could not do any more reps. So I use this exact same concept in the spreadsheet, which basically for the needs attention column, I would mark X's based on how hard I thought that question was was at the time. Very unscientific, I know. But this is really the only way I could figure out which questions to do and which ones not to. Because after you do hundreds of questions, you can't possibly repeat all of them. So instead you just do the ones that you struggled with. So the other thing that's great about this is that you can have a diagram now of questions that you are bad at. So this is great too, because now you have a personal diagram of what kinds of questions you struggle with the hardest. And now you can focus on those very specifically. So for my example, when I started with these interview questions, I learned that I was terrible at recursion and trees. So I would try to read up on books and just online and everything to really drill in those concepts until I could get them. Another big thing I did was to kind of warm up my brain before starting a study session. And this would either be with an easy lead code question that I haven't seen before or with a difficult question that I had done recently that I'm now going to repeat. So basically given the information from above, the spreadsheet, the learning how to learn course and timing my questions, you basically see how I try to retain as much information as possible. Now, don't get me wrong, I was not perfect at this at all, but it really helped me to slowly understand concepts that were really difficult for me to grasp in my head at the beginning. But the next logical step was, now that I've done all this practice, how do I make it actually count 
when it's time for an interview. So when I was studying without an interview scheduled, I would kind of just do random questions on the top 100 lead code questions, or I would be doing questions directly from the courses I took, like Algo Expert and Interview Camp. But when it was actually time to interview, I had to adjust my strategy to tailor it to each company because it wasn't really productive to just randomly study questions to prepare. And I did that with Lead Code Premium. So this is not an ad or anything, but Lead Code Premium is a huge help to study. I think it costs like $35 a month or $159 yearly, which I remember thinking there is no way I'm paying that much just to help me study. But let's put it from a cost benefit analysis point of view. If you use Lead Code Premium and using it, puts you over the edge of getting that job offer you really want. And in turn, that job offer gives you a 40% raise. Was it worth it then? I think so. Anyways, with Lico Premium, you can basically sort all the questions by the company that asked them. Sort the questions by frequency asked in the last six months and just start doing all of them. And I know you're thinking this right now. Yes, it was very, very rare for me to actually get one of these questions in a real interview. But unfortunately, given the landscape of interviewing these days, if you don't use Lead Code Premium, you actually might be at a disadvantage compared to other candidates. But then you might ask, well, if you don't get these exact questions on interviews, what is the point? The main thing it helps with is getting a general sense of what companies like to ask. For example, Facebook or Meta doesn't usually ask dynamic programming questions. I've even heard that it's banned. But Google loves dynamic programming questions. So it really helps you get mentally prepared for what kinds of questions will come up in your interview. And there was nothing really that scientific here. I would just prepare as many questions as possible by the company up until about two days before the actual interview. And then in those two days, I would basically just review the building blocks or the basic data structures and algorithms just to get a general sense of all the concepts so I could be prepared for anything. These are all the questions that are in the front of the elements of programming interviews in Python book. And I kind of just did this just so I wouldn't be completely blindsided if they asked me a question from a concept that I hadn't studied in like, two weeks or something. I think using these tips from above and really refining them to your own process will really make studying lead code as efficient as possible. And yes, it's very normal for you to forget everything after you get a job because you don't really use these questions on the day-to-day -day job. But thankfully, I found that it's much easier to train yourself back up to interview prep levels the second time around when you're studying these questions again. But yeah, that's it. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you want me to talk about.